It's my first visit to Kerala, but not my first visit to India. I was here 32 years ago. So I'm a, a teaching scholar, a Fulbright senior teaching scholar at St. John. I think uh, one of the things about the specialty of neurology, just not, uh, not only neuromuscular neurology, but neurology in general, uh, is it's so important to have a good grasp of anatomy. And I think one of the things that really uh, enabled me to recognize multifocal motor neuropathy as separate from motor neuron disease was a thorough understanding of anatomy. Second thing is you have to love physiology. You have to understand how nerves conduct electrical impulses and you have to be interested in that. If that doesn't interest you, you shouldn't be in neuromuscular disease or the specialty of peripheral neuropathy. Uh, well, the, the plan was to come this year and see how it worked out, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I fully intend to come back uh, at least once a year, uh, probably not for not as long as I have this year. I mean, this year I've been here for five months, and uh, in future years it will probably be six to eight weeks. Uh, but the plan is to come back each year at about this time, uh, October, November. Yeah, one of the things I'm particularly interested in at the moment is uh, the um, increasing number of genetic uh, treatments that are becoming available or genetic related treatments. Uh, one of the things we're doing at St. John's is trying to establish uh, a nationwide network of neuromuscular centers interested in characterizing the phenotype of, of adult onset Pompe's disease, for example. Uh, it didn't matter in the past because there was no treatment, but now that we have enzyme re replacement therapy, it's become important to recognize this condition. And the, uh, the number of phenotypes has uh, be been, I think, greatly under-recognized. Uh, other treatable uh, neuromuscular diseases include uh, con the congenital myasthenic syndromes and, and the critical importance of being able to look at the different genotypes in choosing the treatment that you would want because the phenotypes often look very similar to each other. Um, the, the advances in treating spinal muscular atrophies and so on. So I, I think that's an area of great excitement as far as I'm concerned. Uh, in the immune field, which is uh, a, long, you know, a lifelong passion of mine, I got interested in immune-mediated neuropathy in 1976. I had just gone to the University of Pennsylvania when there was the outbreak of Guillain-Barre syndrome following the swine flu influenza. Uh, vaccination program and that's when I got interested in it and have maintained that interest throughout my career and for a long time we gave steroids and if that doesn't work we threw our hands up and said I don't think there's much more that we can do and then we did plasma exchange and then we did IVIG but now we're getting into the era, era of all the monoclonal antibodies and uh, every time you turn around there seems to be a new monoclonal antibody that can be used to treat uh, different diseases not just neuromuscular diseases but many of them are applicable to the neuromuscular diseases that I'm so interested in. Uh, so uh, we're interested in the role of eculizumab um, in, in, uh, as a possible treatment for Guillain-Barre syndrome, also for myasthenia gravis. I'm very interested in rituximab and other B-cell depleting strategies for the treatment of inflammatory neuropathies. And in fact, uh, we are currently preparing a paper for publication on our experience for, with rituximab in CIDP. So I think the future is bright. I think that we're really going to see more and more treatments become available. Uh, you know, the, 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 what we really want is to get a treatment for ALS. And we don't have that yet, um, but we're starting to just knock on the door of that. There are, are some stem cell uh, treatments that are in trial now. And, and I think if we can get a treatment for ALS, uh, that will be fantastic. But I think stem cell therapy is practical now. Um, I'm not convinced that traditional stem cell therapy has much of a role for neurology. Uh, I think people must understand what stem cell therapy is about. Um, I, I think that stem cell therapy can be very effective in treating any autoimmune disease. It doesn't matter whether uh, it affects the nervous system or not. Um, but, but what stem cell therapy doesn't do is replace missing parts. And, and that's, there, there is this misconception in the public that stem cell therapy is about growing new nerve cells or whatever. It, it doesn't do that. And I don't think that's going to happen in the next 10 years either.
I certainly think so. You're right about subspecialty. I think uh, one of the things I've learned working in India is there are so many patients and so few neurologists. And so every neurologist must practice general neurology. Uh, I don't think that means you cannot have a subspecialty interest. And, and in fact, I would encourage young neurologists in training to develop a subspecialty interest. They may still have to see strokes and headaches and epilepsy and Parkinson's disease and all other aspects aspects of neurology, but the field of neuromuscular disease is very exciting, lots of things happening, um, and to have a, a, a special expertise in that area I think makes you uh, very important for Indian neurology, and, and I'd like to see that happen more and more. I did. The, the last marathon I did was at 60. It took me a long time, but I did finish. And uh, I used to run uh, ultra marathons, you know, 50 to uh, uh, up to 100 kilometers. Uh, but I'm too old for that now.